Hi and welcome to Get Your Comms Up. Do you know what to do if the cell system was unavailable or the internet doesn't work? How are you going to communicate with your loved ones, your family members, your friends, your neighbors? In this video, we're going to give you some tools that will help you do just that. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so here's the Baofeng, which most of you are familiar with and most of you already have out of your box, but we're going to go over a few things just to get started. So when you receive your radio, it comes packaged in a little cardboard box just like this. When you open it up, you'll probably have a little user manual. There's not a whole lot of use in these. Uh, they're not written real well. So that's part of why we're going to do these videos, so you guys can get all the information you need and not have to try and decipher the manual. So radio will come wrapped here in plastic. You can go ahead and take that out. And underneath that, you're going to have the battery. These batteries do not come fully charged, so you will need to charge your radio before you can use it. Before we put our battery in our radio, let's take out this top tray. And under here is going to be your charger, your microphone, and your antenna. And what we really want right now is your antenna. Go ahead and take your antenna out. We're going to put that on the radio first off. You don't ever want to turn on a radio that doesn't have an antenna on it. If it doesn't, a little port right here, if you have your finger on it and you accidentally transmit, you can get an RF burn. And the other thing that can happen is if you don't have this antenna on top of your radio here and you transmit, the power has to go somewhere. If it can't go out the antenna, it'll go back into the radio and can actually damage your radio. So it's always important to keep an antenna connected to your radio. And now we're ready to put the battery in. The battery, you just set it in place and then slide it up. You should hear it click. And now the radio is ready. You can turn it on at this point. Channel mode. These will come up and talk to you. It's a little irritating. There's some ways we can fix that later. Or maybe you like it talking to you all the time. So, like I said, we need to charge this radio before we can use it. So, next out of here, Al, you got your little earphone speaker. But what we really want is the charger. So we're going to get the charging cable out and the drop-in base charger. We'll go ahead and set this guy up. Plug it in here. And we'll plug it in here to power. And what you'll get, you should have a red light on your wall wart here, showing that it, that has power. Set that out of the way. And then you should have a green light on your charger. Some of the earlier chargers, this light would flash red and green alternating, and that's okay. That just means it's got power, but nothing's in, in the charger. Now you'll see when we set this radio in the charger, the light went red. That means it's good, it's charging. When the light goes green, that means your charging is all done and you're ready to use your radio. Important point, these radios do not come pre-programmed from the factory, even though if you look, it will show that it has some frequencies programmed in here. These are just some test frequencies that they put in at the factory. Don't transmit on them because you're not authorized to transmit there. So we're going to let that sit in the charger. All right, so our charge indicator light has gone green. We're ready to get started. All right, guys, another item that though, that is in the box is a belt clip, and this just screws onto the back side of the radio. Um, you can pull these two screws out right here and then put them back in place with that clip right there. I don't really care for belt clips on my radios. That's really a personal preference, but what I find is if you're using a belt clip on your radio, the whole face of your radio is exposed to damage. If you brush up against something with your belt or a backpack, if you have it clipped on, you can peel these buttons right off the radio. You can also damage your display. So what I prefer doing is buying a pouch, um, you know, some kind of a pocket that the radio will slide down into instead and leaving the back nice and slick without having that belt clip in the way. But that's a personal preference. Everybody uh, is different. Some people really like those belt clips and they, they do work pretty well, but you just have to be aware of you can damage your radio Everybody can see what's on your, the display of your radio. So if that's something that you're you know, interested in, a little bit of security there, um, I highly recommend covering the display instead of, of leaving it out in the open. All right, guys, radio's all charged. So here's what we have. 
This is a basic Baofeng, a BFF8. There's also UV5R and a variety of other variants. They're all basically the same radio. Uh, slightly different build uh, internals and a little bit different firmware, but they all act and operate the same. Up top here, you've got your antenna right here. Next is a little flashlight. We'll show you how to turn that on in a minute. And you have your volume and, and on off knob. If you turn that, it'll click on you and it'll come up and there you see the screen's up and lit. On your side, you have a call button. This is also how you'll access the FM broadcast radio. So if I push it once, you'll see FM. Okay, and you can tune through using the up and down arrow keys here and look through the FM broadcast band to get local news, weather, that kind of information. You just push it to get out of it. Interesting note, if you're listening to the FM broadcast band, is if anything's transmitted on the two frequencies that you're listening to, it will switch back over automatically. So don't feel like you're going to lose um, a conversation with somebody because you're listening for a weather report or, or local news. So on the side, that's the call button for that FM. If you push and hold it, it does this alarm, and it does transmit that out over the air. So don't, don't do that. It's very irritating for other people listening. Uh, it's kind of meant as a get your attention if you've already tried calling somebody and they're not answering. Uh, maybe they fell asleep in the deer stand. You never know. So, But don't use that, especially on amateur frequencies. It's, it's one of those things that's very irritating to people. Uh, the big button here on the side is your push to talk. That's when you push that, it transmits. So right here, if I push, you'll see this light light up. It goes red. That means I'm transmitting. Uh, if it's not lit up, nothing's happening. If I'm receiving, we'll show you that in a little bit, that light turns green. So that's your push to talk button. Right below that is this monitor button, uh, M-O-N. Uh, there you go. Now you can see it. So if I push and hold that, it's going to open the squelch. And you can see how that light went green. Because the radio basically believed it was receiving something. The monitor button is useful for two things. One, okay, if I want to set the volume of the radio, I can push and hold it and then adjust that. It gives me a basic idea of how loud the radio is going to be when it receives stuff. Also important if you're using a little earbud in your ear, um, you can do that same thing so that when you get a call coming in, it doesn't blast your eardrums out. And then also, if you're receiving a weak station and they're just barely there, so they're like breaking your squelch, kind of like that. Okay, I'm forcing it to do it. But if they're, if that's what's happening and you can't copy them, you can push and hold that button, have it forced open, and then you can hopefully hear that person even though they're down in the static. So on the front, you've got VFO MR. This is the one that changes MR as memory, and VFO is variable frequency operation. And that's if you were going to punch in a, a direct number here on the keypad. Most of your radios, you're going to end up having programmed or programming yourself. In a future video, we will talk about how to program these radios. But to switch between programmed and variable frequency operation, you just push the button here and it switches. All right, so if I push this button, you'll notice the difference is over here on the right-hand side, you'll see these little numbers, 91 and 92 right now, and then they disappear. So this is variable frequency operation. This is memories. This one also has what's called an alphanumeric tag. It means it has a name that it's going to show. And there's a way to set whether you display a frequency like this one's doing down here or an alphanumeric name tag like this one. And that's a menu setting we'll get into later on how to change. But if you're showing these little numbers over here, the 91, 92, those, that's the, what memory channel you're on. And if those aren't there, it means you're in a direct keypad area. And so now if I push buttons down here, you'll see that changes. And so I can direct enter in a frequency. So most of you are going to be using memory because you're not going to have a bunch of frequencies that you're going to try and enter in all by hand. That is very time consuming. And if you're switching frequencies a lot, it's much simpler to use the memory modes. So A, B, you'll notice when we were in here, there's two sets of frequencies, a top and a bottom. Same here when we're in memory, they're 91, 92 right here. That's your A and your B band. 
A is on top, B is on bottom. And you'll notice over on the left-hand side here, that little arrow, if I push this blue A, B button, you'll see that arrow switches top and bottom. That is where I'm going to transmit on. If I push the push to talk button, and it's also where I'm going to receive on a stock radio when this first comes from the factory. There's actually a way to have it listen to both of these, but if you haven't changed that in the menus, then it's only going to listen to where that arrow is. And that's another thing we'll get into in a future video on how to adjust those uh, memory features, the men menu features that will allow you guys to change how and when this radio will listen to things. So next down here, menu. This is again where we said we get in to change those features. Um, and that is a future video because pretty much there's enough memories in here or menu settings in here that that's a video on itself. The up and down arrow key right here in the middle on the top. If you're in the memory modes, which we are, if you go push the arrow key up, you'll notice that this number here is changing. As I push... Okay, as I push these up and down. Um, National Weather Service is something I really recommend everybody to have in their radios. All right, so the thing with these radios is if I want to do a direct keypad entry for a memory, I have to type in a three-digit number. So for getting to memory one, I type zero, zero, one, and that gets me to memory one. If I want 91, I need to do zero, nine, one. Okay, and again, if I want to go to say 101, I would do 101. But it's always a three digit number sequence, even though channel one it would just be one, you won't get there. You have to do zero, zero, one. And that'll change you to memory channel one. So no matter what, always enter three digits. So if it's a smaller than a 100 number, you're going to enter a zero or two zeros and then the number that you want, depending on below 10 or below 100. On the lower right-hand side, you've got the pound key. If you'll notice in blue, it also has a little key emblem. If I push and hold that, right up here in the display, you'll notice that little key disappears and reappears. You gotta push and hold for about two seconds to make it either turn on or turn off. If it's on, I can do whatever I want here on the keypad and nothing happens. Okay, that's a lock. That way, I don't bump my buttons on the radio when it's in a pouch or a pocket or on my belt and get off the frequency that I wanna be on. Now I can still transmit and I can still use the monitor button, okay? to get, uh, to listen to that station that's weak. But you you can't accidentally get off your frequency that way. And so if you're on, if you turn your radio on and you're trying to change channels and it won't let you, look up here for that little key. If that key is there, push and hold, that key will go away and now your radio's back to allowing me to switch between my memory channels. So another, Button to know is the star key right here. It says scan. If I push and hold that, my radio is going to start scanning. Now, these are not a very good scanner. They're very slow, but it will allow you to search through whatever you happen to have programmed into your radio, and it will get you, uh, you know, whatever's transmitting in those areas. Uh, next, on this side of the radio, you'll see this little cover. It says speaker and mic. You can open that up. And those are the ports that you'll use for plugging in an external earbud or a speaker microphone. And it's also how you program the radio is you buy the cable that goes in here and then goes into the USB in your computer. Uh, you've got a little lanyard piece here. You can put a wrist strap on if you want. Um, I do recommend wrist straps depending on where you're using the radio. And especially if you're going to use that belt clip and clip these onto a backpack, you know, on the outside, it's a good idea to actually have a little carabiner and clip a, a retention lanyard to this so that this doesn't get knocked off by brush and you lose your radio out in the woods. On the back side, these are the charging ports for the batteries when it's in that drop-in base charger. 
And then if you ever need to remove the battery to change batteries, right here, you push this down and pull the radio down or pull the battery down and it comes right off the back of the radio. Again, to reseat, you, you wanna make sure that clips up and that way the radio and battery are seated together properly. Hey guys, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.